The next thing we need to consider is the payroll categories. If I click on payroll categories, up comes a list of the various areas that MYOB has divided its wages into. There are wages. On top of that, every person was entitled to a superannuation guarantee and other superannuation. They're all entitled to a holiday pay or sick pay, unless they're not. There can be deductions for union fees, etc. There are expenses associated with payroll, such as payroll tax and also work cover. And of course, we are responsible for re- extracting taxes from someone's pay so that we can pay it over to the government for them. With wages, which is the first block here, we have base hourly and base salary, these two items here and here. Every person must be on either an hourly or a salary base. In addition to that, we can pay them bonuses, we can pay them holiday pay, and if necessary, holiday leave loading. We can also pay overtime at one and a half times the rate or double the rate or even sick pay. And if we go further down the list, we can also pay unused holiday pay and unused long service leave should they leave employment. If I look at base hourly and click on the little white arrow at the beginning of the line, it'll come up and tell me that the wages name is base hourly, that the type of wages is an hourly wage, and it is a pay rate, it is the regular rate multiplied by one. This is the regular rate that is determined in each person's card, which we'll come to shortly. We can also here set up a fixed hourly rate. So for example, if they had an allowance for uh, a daily travel allowance, for example, we could set that up with a fixed hourly, for hourly also read daily, rate of say a dollar a day to cover their transport, whatever it may be. It depends upon the various Uh, agreements under which people are employed. If I click OK, it will take me back to the main screen. If I want to add a new category, such as overtime at, for working Christmas Day, you might get four times the rate. If I click New, it'll ask me, what is your new wages name? I'm going to call this overtime times four. Is it an hourly or a salary? It's an hourly rate. And it's the regular rate multiplied by not one, but four. Change it to a four, press tab, and that is it. If it was a new expense that may not go to the wage expense account that is normally used, then I could put it to another account. If I click OK, I've now got a new rate over time times four. If I wanted to add a travel allowance, if I click new and then call it travel allowance, again, it's an hourly wage and it is a fixed hourly rate of whatever it is per day. We'll make it $10 a day. And rather than it go to a normal employee's wage expense account, I may decide to put it to another account, and I can then choose which account I want to put it through from this listing. I'll leave it for the time being on wages and salaries. Cancel that and click OK. So I've now added two new types of paying wages. Everybody is entitled to superannuation guarantee, providing they meet certain guidelines. The superannuation guarantee, if I click on the white arrow, it tells me that the linked expense account is 5150 other employer expenses. My normal rule is if it's superannuation guarantee, I want the cost to go to superannuation. If I click on the down arrow, it'll bring up a list of the various expense accounts I've got, and I can see there that I can choose the account 5120 to put my expenses against superannuation. If I click on that and click Use Account, it'll change it. There is an overall account for recording all liabilities for deductions known as Payroll Accruals Payable. 
My own preference is to separate the various liabilities I have to pay and I put them in separate accounts. So if I click on the down arrow, it will bring up a list and I've got in here an account called superannuation liability. If I double click on it, again, I will get the appropriate account set up there. With the superannuation guarantee expense, Yes, I do need to print it on the pay advice. It equals currently 9% of the gross wages. Shortly over the next, I can't remember how many years, to increase to about 15%. There is no limit on the amount of gross wages. There is, in fact, a limit of the total amount I can pay per year. Uh, you will need to check that for yourselves and put that amount in at equaling, let's say it's $25,000 per year and when it gets to the yearly total of 25000 it will stop calculating. There is a minimum amount of wages which is required to pay superannuation on. If a person earns 450 and is entitled to a superannuation of 9% of that per month then he's entitled to $40 per month. That $40 will be snaffled up in an administration expense and therefore the limit of 450 is generally accepted. If they earn less than that, they don't get it. Okay.